Hi, uh, good noon. Uh, my name is Yang Liu. I'm a, a chair of Asian art uh, department and also curator of Chinese art at Minneapolis Institute of Art. Uh, I'm so happy to have this opportunity to uh, share with you uh, my knowledge about this uh, uh, exhibition, Captive Beauty, depictions of women in late uh, Imperial China, uh, currently on view at the uh, Kalamazoo Institute of Arts. Um, so my uh, topic uh, today uh, would be uh, about this show and uh, uh, Captive Beauty's depiction of women in late Imperial China. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is uh, uh, our museum. If you haven't had a chance to visit, uh, you are so welcome to come to visit us. Uh, next, please. And the next. So uh, some of you might have uh, visited the show. Um, I want to start with the image of uh, uh, beauty and the flowers. Uh, in the... Uh, very well know um i mean a play that created by a ming dynasty uh playwright tang xianzu of uh late 16th century uh, entitled the, the peony pavilion the female um uh the lady in that play named uh du li niang once lamented the unattended, brilliantly flowering spring scene in the uh, deserted garden with the following scene. Next piece. See how deepest purple, brightest scarlet open their beauty only to dry well scumbling. The image of flowers here is a, a, it really has a double meaning. It refers at once the useful women, refined and delicate yet fragile, their beauty, meaning marriageability, uh, transient. It is also suggestive of the life of female in the general population in Imperial China, like an unappreciated flower in an isolated garden. Women were blossoms flowering only in the shadow the natural beauty of flower easily led to the an equation with the female beauty in literature flowers and women often shared attributes of refinement delicacy and of fragr fragrance and the poets often lead the readers uh, imagination to flit between two kinds of flowers the plant and the human Artists also enjoy this interplay. Next piece. Uh, this is the uh, uh, decoration on the plate now in V&A collection in London, depicting this uh, uh, the scene. This lady visited um, the uh, Pioneer uh, in that play, Pioneer Pavilion, the garden. Next piece. So in this painting, the portrait, young Manchu lady by an, an uh, anonymous painter of the early 19th century, which is on view at the museum, the sitter, an aristocratic uh, young Manchu woman, wears a blue robe adorned with a circular uh, pattern, which is actually the character uh, so in Chinese, meaning longevity, which tells us that her portrait was commissioned to celebrate her uh, birthday. Surrounded by refined and expensive objects, she is uh, seated at the lacquered table on the garden terrace, wearing uh, a fashionable hairstyle decorated with flowers. Next please. On the table near her uh, elbow, uh, a snuff bottle, fan, uh, Rui or wish granting uh, scepter and the porcelain flower vase bearing a cluster of uh, blossoming peonies flowers in various colors. 
Next piece. <coughs> At her feet is uh, a porcelain flower vase bearing a cluster of blossoming uh, magnolian tree. Under the table, there's an unusual tissue container or a sewing box, apparently made in Europe. Uh, it is another subject object that suggestive of the sitter's imperial connection. So both flower pot and the box are lavishly decorated with uh, butterflies. Uh, next piece, and auspicious uh, motif since the Chinese character that for butterfly is a, a homophone for the word meaning age uh, seventy. Another way of wishing uh, someone a long happy life. So uh, both uh, these two flowers. A magnolia and the peony are symbolic. They representing the young lady's beauty uh, as well as her social status. The magnolia's uh, connect connotation is straightforward with its uh, snow white color, sometimes dotted with purple tones. It symbolizes a fresh and a, a pure maiden. The symbolism that uh, accumulated around a peony was determined by imperial um, court. During the Emperor Xuanzong uh, of the Tang Dynasty, uh, her, his portrait is shown on, on, uh, on this uh, the screen. Um, he ruled uh, in the uh, eighth century, very long reign, uh, over almost over 50, um, 50 years, 50 years. The peony was during that ring the peony was a uh, likened identified with his favorite consort um, the concubine uh, named yang guifei next piece so this is the uh, uh modern sculpture of this lady the favorite woman of this tang dynasty emperor uh, of uh, eighth century now uh uh in a, a place near uh xian the city in uh, northern China. According to an episode, when the peony was cultivated for the first time in the imperial garden, this emperor paid a visit to the garden when the flowers were in full bloom. Accompanied by uh, his favorite lady, Yang Guifei, just as the court musicians were about to perform, the emperor stopped them and saying, on this rare occasion of enjoying the twin beauties of flower and uh, uh, concubine, who could bear to listen to old songs? The renowned poet Li Bai, uh, who served in the imperial household at the time, was called in and ordered by emperor to compose a set of three lyrics uh, to honor both uh, this uh, lady and the splendor, the peony. In these poems, the peony was likened and identified with the uh, imperial favorite woman. The, the third poem in this set reads, next piece. The most famous flowers and uh, noblest the beauty rival each other. Both attract his majesty to engross himself in great pleasure. At this time, uh, leaning against the railing on the northern uh, side of a fragrant pavilion, what kinds of worry and grief could not be dispelled? Um, next piece. There are many uh, uh, paintings and, and uh, uh, art in uh, different mediums depict this uh, episode. One of them actually in our collection in, uh, was depicted by a Japanese artist uh, in the uh, six, uh, 16th to uh, 17th, 17th century. Uh, a folding screen. It's uh, very interesting that also captures that um, beautiful moment. Uh, next piece. Here, you can see that uh, uh, the emperor in white garment is actually uh, play a sort of a music instrument. Uh, standing behind him is a musician uh, playing flute. Uh, in front of them, this uh, um, Emperor Xuanzong's favorite woman, Yang Guifei, is dancing. Next piece. 
and the Li Bai uh, stand next to them uh, is uh, chanting this poem. And the next to him is a cluster of uh, peony uh, that is uh, likened with the imperial beauty. <clears throat> next piece. Next piece. So uh, this uh, royal association with the peony led to the flower being charged with the political overturns and used as emblem of imperial strength, blessed with a majestic elegance, splendor, and aristocratic association. The peony is hailed as the king of all flowers and attributed with the beauty which can overthrow a city or country. It is one of the most uh, enduring and uh, uh, pervasive images in Chinese literature and arts, standing firmly as the symbol of honor, wealth, and uh, nobility. Uh, in the next painting uh, showing here, also in the exhibition on view at the museum, uh, entitled Two Beauties by an uh, artist named Liao Yun, uh, painted in 1847. The beauty and the sensibility of the flower, as well as its allusion to the court or noble ladies is captured in uh, the combination of visual imagery and the poetic imagination. The painting depicts two young ladies, one sitting with a book in her hand and the other standing behind her, pointing to a line in the book their accessories, uh, luxuries, clothing suggest that they are uh, high status women from the imperial court or other up level of society. Flower images are seen everywhere. Next piece. They serve as a decoration on ladies' fashionable hairstyles. They appear on the silk fans. Next piece. One lady holds and the also adorn the robes the young ladies wear. The flower and the women compete with each other in beauty and the tears admires to choose between their blossoms, beauty and that of a woman. The, this painting, as you can see here, is drawn in a realistic manner and the artist's skill can be seen in the delicate rendering of the textile design hair, ornaments, and uh, fluid uh, lines of the drapery. As a result, it provides valuable information about elite women's fashion and uh, accessories, providing uh, a document of sort of uh, uh, material culture of the time. Next piece. So there's a, a, a such a, a, a composition I see uh, quite a lot, uh, painted by a famous artists of the time. Um, there's a set of a very well-known uh, painting entitled The Twelve Beauties, now in the collection of a Palace Museum in Beijing, um, as shown here on the, on the screen, uh, is uh, probably one of the best uh, among others. The next piece. Next. And next. Next. So, uh, uh, next piece. So the short time span when a woman was flourishing and about to be married was often compared to the blooming blooming of a flower and the ripening of fruit. In classical Chinese literature, women who died at young age or were uh, forsaken by men were described as weathered flowers, a popular poetic genre known as lamenting the flowers was used to signal the uh, fatal destiny of both flowers and the women. Closely related to this theme of lamenting the flower is the pain of love, next piece, known as um, female resentment in Chinese literature. A woman suffered because she was uh, 
frequently left alone as her husband was engaged in business or in new affairs, or was uh, uh, forsaken because of faded beauty. Uh, this type of poem serves as an expression of a grievance, a grievance for uh, sullen feelings of those ladies due to their abandonment or sexual uh, or sex uh, uh, se segregation. This type of writing overflowing with uh, longing, lamenting, and uh, um, uh, is vividly illustrated in another painting, also in the show at your museum. Next piece. Uh, entitled um, uh, Ode to the Pipa, Pipa uh, inst music instrument, painted by the 17th century artist uh, Wang Jianzhang in 1650. The painting was based on the famous poem of same title, composed by uh, the Tang Dynasty famous poet Bai Ju Yi uh, of um, late uh, 8th century and uh, uh, 9th century, written when Bai Ju Yi was serving as marshal in exile in the place in the mid -young, in the middle reach of Yangtze River. The poem tells of the poet's chance encounter with a woman who was an expert player of the pipa, this uh, of, of four-string the music instrument. Bai Ji Yi recounts the story of his uh, of this musician's set life, beginning with her early days as a high-valued student in the Imperial Music Academy, and later as the courtesan. In her glory, in her glory days, her art. Uh, the admiration ever of experts, this uh, I quoting from the poem, her beauty, the envy of all uh, leading dancers, end of the quote. Uh, however, when her beauty began to fade, she fell out of favor. Uh, I quote again from this poem, with ever fewer chariots and horses at her door, so that finally she gave herself as wife of to a merchant. Merchant, end of the quote. But the uh, this merchant cared only for money much more than for her, and often went away, leaving her languish and alone on a, um, a riverboat. Here in the painting, next piece. One depicts a woman standing on a boat in the moonlit river playing the music instrument. Interestingly, her face, uh, she faces away from the viewer, uh, hiding her expression, her sorrow cultivated during a long period of neglect, as well as, as, as her fading beauty is obscured. Next piece. So, uh, relating to this uh, uh, metaphor of uh, languishing flowers in the deserted garden mentioned earlier, one um, component of so called a female resent uh, resentment theme is the uh, grievance over women's isolation from outside the world. For most of their life, they were physically restricted within the domains of their bedroom. In the, another painting, next piece, entitled Court Ladies at Play, painted by an uh, artist uh, called Xu Zhuang in 1683. Here, four ladies sit around a low table, playing cards in the garden surrounded by rocks and the bamboo and the cherry and the uh, magnolia trees. The imperial red table covering an, uh, women's elegant clothing and the postures identify them as ladies of imperial court, just as their bored expression indicating indicates an obvious lack of interest in the game itself. They are mainly passing time as they wait 
await for an imperial summons. The subject and the style are intended to evoke the courtly art of the Tang Dynasty, when ladies played complex roles within the high walls, but they are solemn and uh, melancholy. Expression reflected the theme of uh, abandonment and uh, sex segregation in literature. In the painting, the large setting is further uh, enhanced by color, as you can see here. Blue green for the garden rock in the foreground, imperial red for the table covering, and the carpets on which the ladies sit. Such bright colors form a sharp contrast with and serve as a foil to the griffins of the court ladies. Next, please. This is a detail of the painting. Next, please. Despite the, the tough realities of living in a male-dominated society and being uh, forever under the weight of the ethical norms which were created by men to work for men, some women did break through uh, these barriers, a genre that shows a growing interest in the uh, uh, inner lives of women reflects a current literally uh, trained in late imperial China. Uh, through uh, the uh, this uh, heroines and uh, strong design and uh, persisting pursuit of a free, free love, it revealed a growing spout, a sprout of human humanism. Some of these uh, depictions show women who were brave enough to express their uh, suppressed emotions. So paintings to, uh, portraying scenes inspired by uh, popular love stories and the uh, uh, indulgence of young couple in paintings, composing poetry and appreciating eating flowers become models of a sentimental education for young men and women. Next piece. So in imperial China, most marriages, as I mentioned earlier, were arranged by families and uh, correspond to uh, specific uh, social needs. In popular culture, however, there was no lack of depiction of uh, love at first sight. Uh, the passion, excitement, and the intoxication of falling in love were often captured in moment when the gazes of a man and women met and the love sprouted in both of them. Such an accident, accidental meeting is the subject of this painting also on view at your museum. Uh, a hand scroll painted by a uh, 19th century artist Fei Danxu in 1839. The spring setting features peach blossoms and the green willows in the mist, a young man on horseback, seemingly in a hurry, is uh, distracted by young women who stand in the window of a uh, thatched hut. Although Fei Danxi, the artist himself, does not mention it, the painting is uh, apparently based on literary sources. Among others, one specific poem by a writer of the Tang Dynasty in 8th century called Cui Hu likely provided the inspiration for the artist. The poem uh, titled The Village at the South of the City uh, is showing here on this, your screen next. Uh, this very day last year by this door, peach blossom were in bloom against her blushing cheeks. But where, pray, is she now, while the peach blossoms are still here, smiling in the spring breeze? In the uh, literature of the Tang Dynasty, uh, there's a romantic story about how and why this poet, Sui Hu, wrote this poem. According to uh, the Tang Dynasty literature, around 785, this 
poet Cui Hu was a native of uh, a place in present day Hebei in northern China, who traveled to the capital of the Tang Dynasty, Chang'an, in order to take the, the uh, 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 civil service examination. Despite his efforts, he failed. While still in the capital, he left his uh, uh, inn and went for a walk in the suburbs south of the city to see the sights of late spring. After a while, he left. Uh, after a while, he felt uh, thirsty and came upon a house surrounded by willows and uh, blossoming peach trees. He went up to the door and knocked to ask for a drink of water. A beautiful young lady answered the door and uh, fulfilled his request. All too quickly, another year elapsed, and uh, this poet, young man Cui Hu, went back to the capital Chang'an again for the examination. One day in the late spring, this poet, a young man Cui Hu, driven by the desire to see the young girl again, revisited the house in the village. As before, the peach blossoms were in bloom and the green willow tree uh, and the willow trees. To his great disappointment, no one answered the door. Cui Hu then wrote the above cited poem on the wooden door and left. A, a few days later, still unable to calm his mind, he went back to the house again. An old man came to answer the door and told him uh, with great sorrow that the girl had just died, saying, quote, after you left last year, she fell into a chance as if drunk. When she read your poem the other day on the door, she collapsed and was confined to bed where she lay unconscious. Then she died, end of quote. Overcome by shock and grief, Cui Hu walked into the house and uh, sat down on the girl's bed, crying her head on its lap and crying, Cui Hu is here, Cui Hu is here. In an instant, the girl was revived. They later married and uh, lived happily to the end of their days. Such a romantic story. It is no coincidence that the primary pictorial scene depicted in this painting uh, tally with uh, this poet, Cui Hu's poem and the story. Next piece. The springtime peach blossom amid willow trees, the young girl and the gentleman in Tang Dynasty costumes. On the other hand, Fei may have been influenced by many other romantic stories that began with a potent encounter. Um, the uh, composition in this hand scroll is interesting as it uh, taped into the popular taste of the time for narrative stories and uh, poetry, depicting uh, the moments of uh, a poignancy and a latent emotion. Like in many instances of love at first sight, a key element in the uh, story to fall in love is the uh, interplay of sight and the gaze of uh, the young lady and the uh, uh, man. Therefore, Fei Dan Shi portrays the young man pausing as he draws in the rings. He turns his head back and stares at the girl. Next piece. Fei does not, uh, the artist does not uh, depict the moment when their gaze, gazes may, uh, meet. Instead, the girl is seen lowering her head and uh, responding with a flashing expression. Next piece. Next. As mentioned earlier, by custom, arranged marriage was principal form of uh, sexual union 
uh, throughout the history of imperial China. However, that does not mean that married couple was uh, uh, deprived of um, marital affection at all. The mutual uh, tenderness and the respect cultivated between husband and uh, wife in the context of family uh, structure did uh, exist. There's a wealthy wealth of uh, evidence from late imperial China showing the uh, emergence of the uh, marry, ma um, uh, harmonious marriage, which is defined by some scholar as a union between an intellectually uh, compatible couple who treat each other with mutual respect and uh, affection. The poetic exchange between married couple of the high class, for instance, was a fashion. Such uh, ac activities demonstrate a close emotion bond and intellectual com compatibility between husband and wife. Next piece. In this painting, also in the show, uh, entitled Beauty in the Winter by an artist of uh, late 17th, early 18th century named Gao Qi Pei, uh, is a very good example of such a uh, marital affection. The couple, an official and his wife, are wearing elaborate winter costumes. They seem to be engaged in an intimate conversation in front of hot stove on which a pot of wine is warming. They are depicted as having almost equal status. Rather than appearing to serve her husband, the woman seems to uh, command an equal amount of uh, space and, and attention. The bamboo branches and uh, plum blossoms in vase reinforce the uh, winter setting. Plum trees blossom in winter and the bamboo is uh, evergreen. So this is all symbolic. Um, these plants uh, able to withstand the harsh winter season are symbol symbolic of couples moral strength. It is uh, worth mentioning that uh, this artist Gao Qi Pei was a high power uh, civil servant, uh, a ranking official under Emperor Kangxi and the next Emperor Yongzhen of the Qing Dynasty in the uh, 18th century. Advocating for Confucius' idea was uh, orthodox in his official capacity. In painting this Henny scroll, Gao Qi Pei is very un, uh, unusual and unique. He used his uh, hands rather than brush, uh, palms, fingers, and nails. Um, this uh, eccentric manner gained uh, him a very a reputation as a very unique artist. So this painting was not depicted by a brush at the traditional uh, uh, brush, rather it's by, by his hands. Next piece. As demonstrated by Gao Qi Pei's painting, there are strong affections involved where, with married couples. However, such affection are the uh, exception rather than the rule. More often, men of higher class in imperial China married one type of woman and romanced another. Passionate love of a gentleman for uh, so-called a dust woman, which meaning uh, a singing girl or courtesan, was one such type of romance distinguished from married uh, affection for a legitimate wife within uh, a, a patriarchal family. The early stage of a gentleman falling in love was undoubtedly based on sexual attraction, but the relationship uh, would uh, develop into mutual understanding and trust. 
this form of romance is hinted at in a portrait of a young woman composed in 1746 by Kang Tao. Next piece. And uh, artist is an 18th century uh, a painter lived in um, Hangzhou in uh, nowadays uh, Zhejiang province in mid Yangtze Ridge, uh, in lower Yangtze Ridge. The Hany Scroll is a beautiful. Uh, next, sorry, this is the, the uh, detail. Next piece. This painting. The Hany Scroll is a beautiful technically refined a depiction of a young woman. She is a, a show sitting uh, pensively in the garden on a large rock amid low clusters of apparently frozen bamboo. The uh, phoenix shaped gold uh, hairpin, the pearl earring, and the honored robe reveals her wealth. However, her downcast gaze evokes a uh, melancholy uh, sentiment. A slightly later painting dated 1781 by another artist called uh, Luo Ping. Uh, he was well known among so-called a group, uh, so-called eight eccentric, eight eccentrics of Yangzhou. Um, in that painting, uh, the artist portrays a young lady in a similar costume and uh, posture to this painting on view in your museum. It bears an inscription identifying the sitter as a lady named uh, Su Xiao Xiao. As Luo Ping apparently copied uh, Kang Tao, the current painting on view, or an earlier uh, prototype. This painting uh, on view in your museum by uh, Kang Tao, his portrait of a young woman has thus been interpreted as also uh, portraying the same subject. This lady named Su Xiao Xiao, uh, surname X, uh, S U Xiao Xiao X I A O X I A O, uh, was a famous courtesan and a poet from um, a a place called uh, Qiantang in present-day uh, Zhejiang province, and uh, lived uh, in um, the uh, in the late fifth uh, century, because there are so many stories uh, attached to the uh, life of this lady. Uh, there's no way to know that the historical accuracy of them. In one story. She fell in love with a young man who left to uh, get his family's agreement to marry her, but they would not agree, uh, and he did not return to her life. For more than 1,000 years, uh, the story, uh, I mean, uh, this lady known as Su Xiao Xiao, her tomb was situated at the uh, uh, bridge beside the uh, a famous West Lake in Hangzhou. Next piece. And her life and uh, poet poetry provided much inspiration for late Chinese writers and uh, artists. So there are so many paintings depicting the story of Su Xiao Xiao, uh, not only in painting, but in uh, works of other mediums. Uh, this painting is just um, a famous example. The painting bears uh, uh, many inscriptions, uh, poems on the top of the uh, of the picture. Uh, po a poem by, um, including a poem by a famous painter Qian Du of um, a late uh, 18th century and uh, early 19th century, and uh, two paint, uh, poets by a great um, uh, writer named uh, Ran Yuan at uh, the uh, same time. Neither uh, this artist's uh, inscription nor the others make any uh, mention identify the sitter as a Su Xiao Xiao. 
this artist uh, Kang Tao's his own poem reads next piece. Uh, she is not grieving for autumn now, nor moved by spring. The silken fan back in its box, a new one in its hand. As fragrance breezes bringing continent, the metal wings now fade. In this world, can anyone plumb the truth of her heart? The poem describes a young lady as an aging beauty who is saddened, not by seasonal change, but rather because like an old fan put back in a box when a new one replaced it, she has been put aside by her lover for a new and um, a younger woman. Seated here, she noticed that the uh, present spring breezes have begun to replace the chilling winds of autumn, the season of metal. However, she has not found someone that value her. So if the painting indeed portrays Su Xiao Xiao, it combines uh, the affection between a courtesan and a scholar with the theme of so-called uh, female sentiments. Such is the typical story of a, a gentleman of high class and a courtesan in imperial China. A man searches for and falls in love with a sinning girl or courtesan who satisfy his romantic and uh, sensual needs. However, uh, but when, then quickly dumps her once he finds a proper matcher, uh, match from a family of the same social and economic uh, status. Next piece. One other painting, Lady at Dressing Table, uh, also in a show, painted in 1657 by an artist named Wang Chao uh, from Suzhou in Low Ridge of Yangtze River near Shanghai, um, is considered to be uh, affiliated with the same subject. The Henny Scroll depicts an aristocratic lady engaged in her morning dressing. Seated at a dressing table before mirror, the young lady arranges her hair with the assistance of a maid. Next piece. Behind them, uh, a maid, uh, uh, behind them, a female servant makes the bed. The curtains are draw back, revealing messy bed clothes. As in a reality, the canopy bed in painting is a grand symbol of wealth that dominates the bedroom of a noble lady's quarters. Next piece. As you can see here on your left is a bed, a so-called um, canopy bed, uh, a very good example from our museum's collection. <coughs> uh, however, if you compare this bed and the uh, uh, bed in the painting, the uh, elaborate open work designs of its stands, a post and a canopy are suggestive of the early Qing dynasty in contrast to the simple but elegant beds of the late Ming, as the, uh, the example showing here on your left. And uh, next piece. Other thing is the uh, bamboo hamper in front of the bed holds uh, several colorful uh, garments on uh, on the uh, the left uh, corner of the painting. It was previously suggested that the lady in painting is a courtesan, and that the rumped uh, bed clothes and a sleeping garment discarded in the basket to the right of the painting are clear intimations of sexual activity. Why the theme of a courtesan in her bedroom was a popular one during the Qing dynasty 
And many professional artists painted the scenes of this kind of uh, intimate activity, but it is not the case here. The uh, available uh, biographical material about this artist, Wang Chao, is sketchy. But one of these uh, biographies uh, states that he excelled in figure painting. I quote, those of uh, kind of compassion, which means Buddhist figures, are like flowering water and the flying uh, clouds, weathered but transcendent. Those of uh, uh, this, uh, those of the uh, stern majesty are heroic and the unique characters of uh, strong emotion. End of quote. This account does not hint at the possibility that the artist was one of those 17th century artists described by uh, art historian uh, Professor James Cahill as, uh, I quote, uh, producing semi erotic paintings for an urban audience. End of quote. Next, please. Uh, sorry, go back. The uh, accessories of the room, the honored canopy bed, dressing table, and the armchair, luxurious uh, silk garment, decorative mirror, and the fly whisk in the large bronze vessels on the dressing table characterize the occupants as women of noble class. The letter papers, the scrolls contained in the vessel and the books on the table beside her bed also indicative uh, her literacy and the uh, uh, cultured backgrounds. One uh, detail is particularly uh, meaningful, the painting scrolls and the books uh, stacked on top of the bed. Their presence in the scene does not mean to imply that the, uh, these items were uh, carelessly cast aside, but rather suggest something about uh, the uh, lady depicted here. Her bedroom is packed with books, indicating an intelligence, uh, intelligent and well-read uh, personality. Next, please. The uh, strongest evidence uh, uh, for the women's non courtesan status comes from the long colophon or poem written in the beautiful regular script on the upper left corner by uh, a female a poet called uh, Zhou Qi, uh, lived in mid 19th century. Rather than interp interpreting the painting as a portrayal of a cultivated courtesan, as uh, referred above. This uh, female writer, Zhou Qi, seems to uh, see the uh, young lady as a pure virgin girl of around uh, 24 years old, uh, untamed by uh, mundane dust. She cares about nothing but uh, cultivating her own mind, thus indulging in study. So she was not only known as a talented woman who excelled at poetry and painting, <coughs> but also as a, a capable manager <coughs> of a publication house, which published a, a version of uh, the famous um, a novel. Um, a lot of you have heard about uh, this novel, A Dream of the Red Chamber. And, which was annotated by her husband. Indeed, it seems unlikely that such a renowned poet and painter <coughs> with a literally and a cultural uh, upbringing would have uh, written a lengthy colophon or a poem in uh, Daoing, a portrait of a courtesan. Next piece. In addition to romances involving courtesans, the concept of love being cultivated in the relationship between gentlemen and the 
transcendent beings was another popular theme in literature. <coughs> the love affairs uh, between men and women crossing such boundaries were uh, fleeing from the many social bonders, bonds and uh, regulated uh, marriage. In literature, Mary, uh, many spirits were considered coming from families of good standing, but upon dying, become appealing and essential, a fantasy that uh, appeals to uh, writers and the readers, readers of the time who were uh, predominantly male. Next, please. Uh, so there's a, a hand scroll that uh, I will show later uh, is entitled A Nymph of the Luo River, painted by a Ming Dynasty painter Wang Shanggong in uh, 1591, recounts a love story between a young male a poet and the Luo River a goddess. It was based on um, a poetic uh, a prose called, entitled Ode to the Nymph of the Ruo River, um, composed by uh, Prince Chao Zhi of uh, earlier third century. In that, in the tale, in that tale, as the story has it, Chao Zhi is uh, returning from the capital to his own uh, fieldom when he paused by the Ruo River for a rest where the nymph of the river appeared before him. Her beauty is as elegant as an astonishing swan and uh, seniors as a swimming dragon. Cao Zhi is swept away by the beauty and uh, uh, instantly falls in love with this uh, uh, nymph. However, their love is impossible as there can be no marriage between the earthly and the heavenly realms. Uh, this uh, poetic prose, Ode to the Nymph of the Ruo River, became one of the uh, standards of Chinese literature and a favorite subject of a literary artist, uh, literati artists. Uh, in standard uh, depiction of this subject, uh, such as the famous version attributed to uh, Gu Kai Zhi of um, uh, uh, 4th century, as shown here now in the Palace Museum collection in Beijing. The painter tells the story uh, using a series of uh, uh, separate uh, frames with non narrative elements such as plants and the trees uh, used as uh, cues. Uh, cues to divide the space, each relating to a scene in the uh, original text. Uh, next piece. Uh, sorry, go back. So here you can see that the uh, the story starts with the uh, the prince with his uh, uh, attendants arrive uh, at the uh, the Ruo River, and the look at out and the gazing uh, the God is in the river. Uh, next piece. So there are uh, multiple representations of the same figure which indicate the use of a multiplex uh, narrative. However, in the current painting, next piece. Uh, there are more details of this painting. Next piece. So in the painting on view by Wang Shanggong, uh, of the Ming Dynasty. However, the complex narrative in uh, exquisite detail seen in both the poem and other paintings is simplified to a single but quite broad scene. Uh, the moment of Chao Zhi, the poet, encounters the river Ningfu. Instead of uh, presenting a series of scenes that follow in a linear fashion as most artists uh, do, beginning with Cao Zhi's arrival at uh, the riverside where he looks out over the river. Here, in this painting, Wang Shanggong tells the story backwards, 
viewed from the right end to the left, the extraordinary vision of the nymph of the Ruhr River appears immediately. When the scroll unfolds, she looks at the prince who appears not far from her on the left of the scroll at an earlier point in the narrative. Next piece. So here is the prince with his uh, uh, attendant. <laughs> The nymph with, the, with her uh, exquisite robe and uh, distinctively uh, coiffed uh, hairstyle, uh, go back, appears to be hovering just above the surging water, ribbons from her robes blowing in the wind. Standing by the riverbank, uh, clad in imperial robes, next piece, the prince is accompanied by four servants in attendance and another one not far from uh, to his left. With arms sealed in his uh, sleeves, he is also adorned by nymph that he forgot to speak. The use of a reverse narrative highlight heightens the character of the goddess. Her beauty is revealed instantly. There are no introductions and the, the uh, viewer jumps into the story's uh, culmination. Stunned by uh, its astonishing charm and otherworldliness of the goddess. On the other hand, the reverse uh, chronology may also create a sentiment of pity, just like the uh, Tang Dynasty poet Li Shangying lamented in a a love story, a love poem. Next, please. And next. And a moment that ought to have last, lasted forever has come and gone before I know, I knew. Unlike uh, most paintings depicted a nymph of the Ruhr River, which employ heavy colors, this hand, grow, hand scroll is executed in the fine line, uh, go back piece, a uh, technique called uh, uh, Baimiao, uh, back piece. Although the style demands extraordinary brush control, this artist Wang Shanggong uh, alternated uh, areas of dry textured uh, composition, a uh, brushwork uh, with even uh, Y-like lines to add a sense of spontaneity and the liveliness to the uh, composition. The use of extraordinary thin fine lines presents a faint, elusive, and uh, fragmented image, echoing the fantasy of the storyteller. It creates an illusion of uh, secreted desire and suggests the uh, nearness of a love affair. When the viewers, like us, attempt to gain a firm hold on just where and what it is. It proves as fragile as and insubstantial, uh, just as a dream. Uh, thank you. That's the end of my 